guys, welcome to my channel. Dentist Jess here and today I'm going to teach you, I have my handy whiteboard marker and whiteboard, on the different structures that make up our teeth and the surrounding structures. So stay tuned, I have some cool info about what actually comprises our teeth, what are the layers and what surrounds them. So hang tight. tuning in today. I think dental anatomy is kind of cool. Obviously I'm a dentist so it's something that I find kind of interesting. If you're here, whether you're a dental student trying to learn a little bit or pre-dent, maybe you're looking into some of the things that you should know before you start dental school or maybe you're just a patient, a person on the street who's like, hey you know what, I kind of want to educate myself the next time I go in to see the dentist and see what they're talking about so they're not talking way over my head and I have no idea. Well, you found the right spot. Welcome to Dennis Jess, if it's your first time. Welcome if you've been here before or you've seen some of my other videos, I'm glad you're here again. Uh, yeah, today we're gonna just jump right in. I wanna talk to you about the different layers to the teeth that we have in our mouths and some of the structures that support them and surround them. So I'm gonna be using my picture beside me to help point a lot of the stuff out and then kind of talking about each layer as we go through it. So starting off, there is two different components to each tooth. The first part is the part that we actually see in our mouth. That's called the crown. That would be this top part here on this picture. The bottom part, this part here, this bottom half, is the root. As you can see, which a lot of people don't know, it's kind of like an iceberg in our mouth. We have only about a third-ish of the tooth is actually exposed above the gum line for us to see. The other two thirds going down are actually what's in the bone, embedded in the bone, and that's the root of the tooth. So starting off, on the crown portion, there's three layers to it. The outermost layer is something called the enamel. So the enamel on this picture encompasses this all the way around here. So it's what we see in our teeth. Now enamel is the hardest substance in our body. There's a fun little trivia fact for you. It is made up of 95 to 98% inorganic material. It's mainly calcium and phosphorus, but we can have a little bit of extra minerals in there such as um, lead or fluoride or magnesium and then we have about one to two percent that's proteins and a little bit of water but it's super super hard it varies from person to person in thickness so some people have thicker stronger enamel some people have a little thinner enamel and it is one of the things that actually changes the color of your teeth so people can have more gray enamel or more yellow enamel or more white enamel it just kind of fluctuates so the outer hard portion of the tooth is called the enamel Moving inwards, we have the next layer, which is something called the dentin. Now the dentin actually encompasses, I don't know if you can tell, but it's this orange color on this picture and it goes all the way down and encompasses the roots and the crown. So the, unlike the enamel, which just is on the clinical crown at the top, the uh, dentin goes all the way down into the root structure as well. Now dentin is a little bit softer. It's about 70% inorganic and about 30% organic meaning that it's a little bit quicker for it to wear. So when a lot of the times we get a cavity into this area, it takes a while to get through the enamel and then once it hits that dentin, it goes through this little line here that we like to call the DEJ, which is the dental enamel junction. Once it passes that point, lots of the times the cavity will progress a little bit quicker. That's why when we see it past that point, usually we will go forward with doing a filling. The dentin also has these little tubules in it that can contribute to dentin sensitivity. So if you have sensitive teeth, it might be because of your dentin layer. Dentin, unlike enamel, is actually still living, changing material. It basically grows as we get older. So when we first are growing our teeth, when they're coming in when we're children, uh, and the roots fully develop, and we get something here at the bottom that's called the apex, that is where the root kind of like closes. And out of the apex is where we have our blood vessels that connect to the rest of our body. When that happens, what we start getting is something called secondary dentin that starts to deposit, so it can kind of grow over time, so we get more dentin as we get older. We can also have something called tertiary dentin, which is developed in response to trauma. So sometimes if we've had trauma to the tooth, whether it's an infection, whether it's uh, caries, whether it's uh, like physical trauma to it, we can sometimes get something called tertiary dentin that can be deposited. Again, it's still dentin, it's in this middle layer. Okay, moving inwards. So we've got the enamel, we have the dentin, 
And then we have something called the pulp. Now this is where we have all of our vitality of the tooth. So a pulp that doesn't have a tooth or has been root canal treated, we call it non-vital or non-living, meaning that we took this out. What it is, is it's basically our blood vessels and our nerves to the tooth. So it is a direct communication between the body and our tooth specifically. It provides nutrients to the tooth. It removes waste from the tooth. It is what kills when you have an abscess tooth or you have a really, really bad toothache. It's because the nerve has been exposed to that bacterial infection. It is very, very important if you have one of those to go in and see your dentist because it is directly connected to your bloodstream. So if you can see here, we have it here, the nerves and the blood vessels, they run right out that bottom, that apex that I was talking about. And what happens is it actually goes in and it connects into a deeper, longer, bigger bloodstream, goes to your heart, all of the above. So that is the pulp. The other thing about the pulp that it can do is as we start to uh, add more dentin, as you can see, the dentin is right adjacent to the pulp. So as we start to get more dentin, as we get older, our pulp chamber actually starts to shrink. This is why a lot of the times in children, their teeth can be more sensitive than in older adults. This added thickness to the dentist, de dentin, sorry, decreases the pulp size, which decreases our nerve tissue in theory. So we don't have as sensitive teeth the older we get. That's why sometimes you'll see older people and they've got the yellow, the dentin layer exposed and their teeth, you would think that they would be sensitive, but they're not a lot of the times because they have this extra dentin that's already been um, placed in that area and the pulp chamber itself has regressed. Okay, so we have the enamel on the top part that protects the dentin on the top, but what about down on the roots? Well, on the outside of the root surface, you can see in the black here, underneath where we have that CEJ line, the cemento enamel junction, is a basically this black line right here that separates the enamel from something called the cementum. Now the cementum is basically kind of like the enamel, except for it's a little bit softer of a material and the main point of this is for anchorage of the tooth into the bone itself. So it has these little ligaments called PDL or periodontal ligament fibers that run into the cementum and they help to anchor the tooth into the surrounding bone. Now, if you're someone who has root recession or you've got receding gums and you can see part of the cementum exposed, you can see it's a little bit yellower than the enamel on the top, it wears away a lot quicker. So people who have receding gums often have a lot of sensitivity of their teeth. This is because the cementum wears away quicker, it's softer, and then you have that exposed dentin again. The dentin has those two wheels in it that can contribute to sensitivity, and you're also getting closer to the pulp and the nerve on the inside of the tooth. So that can be partly why you're having more uh, sensitivity if you have receding gums. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about all of these little bubbly things on the outside. This is not bubbly things, it is actually something called your alveolar bone. So this is basically your jaw bone. There's two layers to it. There's a part on the outside that's called the cortical bone. This is a lot harder, it's more compact. It's like a denser, thicker bone. And then on the inside is something that's called a spongy or trabecular bone. That's what you can see in this picture here. Basically what this is, is it's the bone that the teeth are anchored into. Now, a lot of the times people think that your teeth sit in the gums. Not true. Your teeth actually sit in the bone and then the gum tissue lies on top of them, kind of like carpet lies on top of hardwood. It's the same kind of principle. In between the tooth and the bone is something that we call that periodontal ligament. Now, I mentioned it before. What these are are little fibers that anchor from that bone. So you can see them here in the kind of red coloring. They anchor from the bone into the cementum of the tooth. I like to think of these things, the closest I can compare them to, or in my mind, what I like to think of them at is kind of like trampoline springs. Kind of like how they all anchor all the way around. They are the shock absorbers. So if you're chewing on something or you kind of bump your tooth, these are the ones that kind of will take the brunt of the force. Again, they also help to anchor that tooth into the bone. They're what holding it in place. So these are really important ligaments. Um, they help give us a little bit of a shock absorber and they anchor the tooth into the bone. On top of it, what you'll see on the top here is something called our gingiva. These are our gums. Most of us know what our gums are. Basically, they're that soft tissue that lies on top of the bone. It's that pinky color. There's different layers to that and we can talk about that in a different video. But this is our gingiva. If we have inflammation in these around the tooth, you get something called gingivitis. Um, you get something called periodontitis if the bone becomes involved. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the layers to the tooth. If you have any questions about any of that, feel free to comment below. Make sure to subscribe if you like this video, share with your friends and family, ring the bell, give it a thumbs up. 
Um, I find it really fascinating to teach this to you guys. So if you want to learn more, make sure to comment below. Till next time.